Hey guys, so today we're talking about the cell cycle and mitosis, which is actually part of the cell cycle, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So if you remember from class today, we talked about the cell cycle being all the stages a cell goes through during its life. Now it starts at birth and goes all the way to di until division. So that first stage, remember that really long stage, is called interphase. Okay, so for most cells, the majority of their life is going to be spent in interphase, which remember is from the beginning of G1 through S all the way through G2 until we hit the mitotic stages, but that's not till later. So all that part, G1, S, and G2, is interphase. So it's during this time that the cell carries out most of its normal functions, like growth and protein synthesis, and so here are stages G1, S, and G2. So the G is going to stand for gap, gap stage, gap stage 1 and gap stage 2. And then the S is for synthesis. So during this time, the cell is going to grow and carry out protein synthesis and other cellular functions. And the chromosomes are all unreplicated. So that means that each only contains one molecule of DNA. So when we get to S phase is the period where the cell replicates its DNA. So at the completion of this stage, all of the chromosomes have two chromatids, so two molecules of DNA per, per chromosome. So if you remember what our chromosomes look like, kind of like a funky butterfly, this guy right here is one chromatid. So we call these sister chromatids, and they're side by side, and the center is called the centromere. After the S phase, the cell is going to enter G2 phase, and the cell is going to continue to carry out all its normal functions and may continue growth so that at the end of G2, uh, the cytoplasmic organelles are going to replicate so that they can get ready to divide for mitosis. Over here we have what's called our mitotic stages, so these two little slices of the pie. They don't take up very much time, but they are very important. So the orange is where we're going to undergo mitosis, and then the next part right here, which I'll color in green, is called cytokinesis. And now this is the part where the cell is actually going to split into two physically. So let's talk vocabulary really quickly before we move on. So in our cells, when our genetic information is not condensed, we call it chromatin. It's just going to be kind of floating around inside the nucleus of the cell. Now when it does condense, we can count the number of chromosomes in any given cell. So all somatic cells in our body, which means all our body cells, like skin cells and liver cells, they're going to undergo mitosis and generally have 46 chromosomes. So we call this 2N and we can also call this a diploid cell. Diploid. Now this means there are 23 pairs of identical chromosomes. So our N is the number of pairs we have. So if we did the math here we could say 2 times 23 would give us our 46 that we humans have. So we call our body cells 2N or diploid because they have 23 pairs or 46 total chromosomes. Now let's move on to mitosis. So let's go over mitosis a little bit with some paper chromosomes. Go! Okay, so during prophase the DNA and proteins start to condense. So these guys right here are going to start looking more like chromosomes and less like chromatin. And then the two centrioles, which are these guys, are going to move to opposite ends of the cell. And here's where our nuclear envelope right here is going to start to break up. So in here, eventually, the nucleolus will disappear as well, and after a while, the envelope will be totally fragmented. So when we get to metaphase, our chromosomes are really individualized, and they're condensed about all the way they're going to be able to and they rearrange towards the center with uh, their centromeres right here along this sort of cellular equator. And this is the part where the spindle apparatus that's coming out of these centromeres is going to attach to the centromeres of each of these chromosomes. So my fingers are going to be the spindle fibers in this scenario, um, and they're going to be pulling eventually the sister chromatids away from each other. So when we get to anaphase, the spindle fibers are attached and they start to pull at the sister chromatids to get them to the other side of the cell. So if you look carefully, the identical sides are going to the opposite 
holes of the cell. So in telophase, the centromeres have gotten all the way to the other ends of the cell, and eventually they're going to start to decondense, so they'll get out of that chromatid form and back into chromatin. Eventually, there'll be a formation of a new nuclear envelope around this genetic material, and when we get to cytokinesis, this part of the cell will totally pinch off and a new membrane will be formed to have our two daughter cells. Okay, so you got it? Well, let's watch it one more time, but this time with music. <laughs> Alright, you sure you got it? If you don't, rewind and watch it one more time, um, and you can practice on your own. Get pieces of paper, move them around, use drawings, whatever you need to make sure you understand these steps. Now, here's one more way to remember mitosis without having to draw or use pictures or anything. Now, your hands are going to be parts of the cell, so prophase, everything's getting ready, we're up like this. Metaphase, chromosomes are lining up in the middle, getting ready to be split apart by sister chromatids, and anaphase, they're being pulled apart by those spindle fibers, and telophase, they're on separate ends of the cell. We're forming two new cells. Ready? Here we go. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Now you do it with me. If there's other people around you, they won't care if you look silly. Here we go. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Now do that like 20 more times and you'll get it. No problem. Okay guys, so make sure you have really good notes about the stages of mitosis and tomorrow we're going to come back in in class and practice them. Alright, see you later.